How's it going guys? In today's lesson, we're going to be going over how we can decode JSON data. And this is a very important part of being a Swift UI developer. We're going to have to deal with a lot of API requests or just JSON data in general. And it's just good to have a fundamental understanding on how it works and how we can decode it in general so that you don't run into problems when you try to decode a new API. So the very first thing we're going to do is import some JSON data. So go to your preview content, create a new Swift file. And I made this one by hand, but just go ahead and type in example. And I'm going to leave in the description down below a link to my GitHub repository. And it's going to be called JSON decoding. You can click on JSON test, click on preview content, and there'll be an example JSON and it's going to include a first name, a surname, agenda, age, address, and some phone numbers. And it's going to be an array, so you're going to have two of these objects inside the array. So go ahead and click on raw, and just copy everything that's inside there, and paste it inside here. And then just click on example, and remove the extension, and change it with JSON. Then all of those errors will go away, and we will have this JSON file. Now for this project, we want to create a phone book out of the information that's given. So it's going to have a detail view and a main view where you can select a contact and show the information. So the very first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create the model. So go ahead and hold Command plus N, click on Swift file and click on Next. And this one will be called JSON Manager. Now it's going to be completely empty, which is great. And the very first thing we have to do is make a model out of this data. So as you can see, we have a first name, a surname, a gender, age, address, and we can actually do this by hand, or we can use a website online to generate it for us. And in this example, I'm going to show you how to use the website because the website, it simplifies our life a lot. So as you can see, what we want to get is something like this. It's going to hold the key and what the key is so that we can decode it later in Swift. So to do this, I'm going to be using a website called app.quicktype.io, which can generate models for essentially any language. If you go here, you're going to notice there's a lot of them. But for Swift, it's very important we have this because it just makes life so much easier and we don't have to do it by hand. So go ahead and go to this site, then go to your JSON data, copy all of the JSON data and paste it inside here so it can generate for us this data model. Go ahead and copy that and go in your JSON manager and just paste it inside there. And instead of having all these comments, we're going to remove them and we're going to replace this with person. So as you can see, just like in our JSON, we have a first name, a surname and a gender. And we don't need this type alias, so remove that. Then we have an address, which is an array of street, city, state, and postal code. And we have a phone number, which has a type and a number, which are both of type string. So all of this data conforms to what's inside here, which means we are set. We can actually get started with decoding this data. So in today's example, we're going to create an extension to the bundle so that we can just call that on any function we want or any data we want. And it's going to include a function called decode. And we're going to be using generics for this. So this can be of any type that is decodable, which means any file essentially. And we can type in file of type string. And it's going to return the type that we specified. Now, the very first thing we have to do is make sure that we have a file to work with. So in general, you want to go ahead and create a guard statement and make sure that the URL, which in any other case would be from an online website, is equal to the self.url for resource, which is going to be the file with the extension, which doesn't matter in this case. So we just set that to nil. So we want to make sure we have that or else we have to go ahead and tell the user fatal error could not find backslash file in the project which means our file is missing. We don't even have example, for example. Next, we need to try to load the data. So we have to go ahead and type in guard let data. And that's going to equal a try block. And if it doesn't work, just return of data, which is going to take the contents of the URL. So now it tries to load it. 
Else we go ahead and copy this fatal error, paste it inside and say could not load file in the project. And finally, we need to create a decoder to actually read the data that we've just loaded. So let decoder equal JSON decoder and guard let loaded data equal try or else return decoder dot decode and we want to decode from t dot self from the data else we're going to write that we could not decode the data because something went wrong so fatal error could not decode file in the project and usually if you have an error here it's because you're not reading it correctly there's something wrong or missing in your model if you have something that doesn't really exist it's not going to be able to find it such as var money of type int it's going to crash the program or it's going to crash at least this function here because money does not exist in example so that's going to be really hard for the program to understand and it's also going to happen if you specify the wrong type, such as age of type string instead of an integer. You need to make sure that the model is exact. Everything has to be exactly as you stated inside here. So for example, as you can see, we have phone numbers and it's an array of phone number. So inside our array, you're going to notice that we have phone number here and it's going to have exactly what we wrote inside here, the type and the number. So that conforms exactly to the model that we're looking for. As you can see also down here, we have a phone number class or struct with type and number. So everything conforms to this person. And of course, we still get the error at the bottom because the most important part of this decode function is that we return something from it and we will return the loaded data. So now we can actually read whatever happens inside the JSON. And now we're going to create some helper functions, which are going to be available to the whole program. One's going to be static let all people, and we want to retrieve all the people here. So here we'll type in, it's going to be of type person, and we're going to use the bundle.main.decode function that we just created. And here we want to supply our example.json. So this is going to return an array of person. We're going to have Mario, Luigi, and Toad returned into this array. So we can already use this, but for editing our Swift UI view or the UI, we want to go ahead and also provide an example. So we can type in static let sample person equal person or not equal person of type person equal all people at the index of zero. So we'll just retrieve the first person from the array and we'll use that data to model our UI. Okay, so now we have the manager made, which means we have a model of the person and we have a way to decode the JSON data, which returns to us the loaded data. So what we're going to do next is go to our content view and actually try to use this data. Here we have to go ahead and create a private var of people, which is going to be an array of people. And that's going to be equal to person dot all people. Now inside here, we can go ahead and create a navigation view with a list and a for each loop. And it's going to be for each people with an ID backslash dot first name and that's going to be the id since we have unique names in this example but in general you really want to use a unique id because of course in contact books or phone books you are going to run into times that you have the same name and different contact information so this is not really a proper id but for this example it's more than fine so for that we're going to type in person in and you are giving me an error because they cannot find people in scope. And I don't know why I wrote people here. This is supposed to be person. So with that being fixed, it will remove those errors and we can continue inside our for each loop. So here we're just going to get started to make sure that the dummy data actually works. And we're going to type in quotation marks backslash like that and person dot first name. All right, so I discovered something that's actually very annoying. And when we tried to change the example to an extension of .json, the project just 
cannot find it and it keeps on crashing. So what we have to do is actually go ahead and download the JSON. So download it as a zip or whatever. And we're going to go ahead and open it. It's going to be called JSON decoding. It's exactly the same as the GitHub, except this time inside preview content, we actually have an example.json file, which we will drag to the desktop. And we're going to have to go ahead and delete the previous one. So go ahead and move to trash. Then we have to go ahead and grab the example JSON and place it exactly where the other one was. So go ahead and click on finish. Now we actually have a JSON file inside our project. And if we go ahead and click on refresh, we're going to have the project built with the people that we specified. And that was extremely annoying because I had exactly the same file from earlier and I myself just spent about 20 minutes looking for what the error was. There was no error in our code. It's just that SwiftUI wanted us to drag a physical file into the editor for it to work or else it couldn't find it. And I was debugging. So again, it's very important you have good messages here because this was the first message that triggered when I was looking for the error. It said could not find the file in the project even if we made it right here. So it's important that you actually download it and drag it into your project to be able to use it. And that's really, really annoying, but it's what makes Xcode so special. But anyway, right now we have the people and they are working, which is great, but let's make this a bit more customized. So let's close this sidebar a bit and maybe minimize you. And instead of having a text, we're going to go ahead and create a navigation link. And the navigation link is going to have a destination of a detail view, which is going to take a person as a parameter of type person. And this will crash immediately if we run it. So let's go ahead and make the program happy and create a detail view. So here we type in detail view. And we need to specify a person here. So, so inside here we'll type in var person. If I can type that of type, I lost my keyboard of type person. And we're also going to provide the person down here. And this is actually what I wanted to show you because we added a sample person, we can type in person dot sample person. And when we run this program, we're going to have all the data from the sample person run inside here. And before we run that, actually, we need to make a closure in here or the navigation link will not be happy. So back to the detail view, we just want to write down some really quick information. So we're going to type in VStack and it's going to have some spacing of 10. And now we can go ahead and type in text, quotation marks, backslash, double parentheses, person, dot, and it's going to give us all the data we want to use, such as the person dot first name, which is Mario, and then backslash person dot surname. So now we have Mario Pomodoro, and we're going to add some bold, so we have the name. And we can do the same thing for all the other fields. So here we can type in text, backslash, and actually I'm going to copy and duplicate this two more times, so I don't have to write it. So now we want to get the phone number. So we'll type in person dot phone numbers. And since it is an array, we need to say it's the first item of the array. And it's going to be either a number or a type and we want the number. Then of course we have person dot address dot street address and person dot address dot city. So this will be the detail view. And each time we select a user, it's going to take us to this information here, which we were able to reference thanks to our person. And in the content view, we can actually go ahead and finish this up. There's a navigation link at the moment and inside here, we need to go ahead and create another VStack and it needs an alignment actually. So alignment of dot leading. The text is going to be set to backslash dot person or the lowercase person of course, dot first name and the backslash person dot surname. And let's close the sidebar. 
So now you should see the name of each user appear in the phone book with a navigation link. And we also want to give the user a view of backslash person dot phone numbers at the index of zero dot number. And we can make this dot bold and this with a foreground color of dot gray. And we want every item to have some padding. So we'll go here and type in padding of six and a navigation title of phone book. So now we were able to use the JSON data. And inside here, we can go ahead and type in Mario and it will take us to Mario. And we can also click on Luigi. It will take us to Luigi, give us the information for Luigi. Or we can click on Toad Toad and it will take us to Toad Toad. And it will give us the information for each user in the person.allpeople array. So if we go back to our JSON manager, what you'll notice is that we were able to use all of this information from the JSON that we loaded. And this is how you can do it from a local file. Of course, it's going to be different each time you have a different JSON file, but this is the basic concept on how to load it. We have to first get the URL. We need to make sure there's a source of JSON. Then we need to try to load the data from the JSON. And if the JSON data was a success, we can go ahead and create a decoder and load and decode the JSON. So essentially this should never go wrong. It went wrong today because Xcode just did not want to acknowledge my example.json file written by hand. It wanted me to physically drag it inside. And I suspect that's because the editor can't update properly. So it required a refresh as soon as I added a physical file. But otherwise we managed to decode this data and we also managed to add these sample properties such as the all people which generates all the people from the example.json and a sample person that we can use for previews such as the one in the detail view. So that was just a bit about how you can use JSON in your projects. In future videos we're going to create lots and lots of applications that use APIs so we're going to be covering all the different ways to pass JSON or to decode it from a URL or from a local file. But I believe we covered enough for today's video. So of course, as always, guys, have a really good day and I'll see you in the next video.